This is Michael Popak, Legal AF Hot Take. Did Donald Trump's lawyers lie to the Appellate Division First Department about his inability to obtain a bond when they knew or should have known that Don Hankey, who runs uh, the company Knight Specialty Insurance Company that eventually posted the $175 million bond, had already come forward and said that he was willing to engage to talk about the posting of a bond for the much larger amount, the $465 million, at the very same time the lawyers for Donald Trump, including Alina Haba, including Chris Keiss, including Todd Blanche, were telling the appellate court that they looked everywhere and they can't find a bonding company to step forward, that they had been rejected rejected, as they had told Judge Angoron, by more than 37 or more bonding companies when Don Henke, who apparently likes to talk to the media about his role in bonding Donald Trump, uh, has now come forward in an interview with ProPublica and has declared that, no, no, I was on the radar with the Trump team before they filed their uh, papers with the Appellate Division First Department about not being able to fund a bonding company. And I was in deep discussions with them about doing just that. In fact, he goes on with ProPublica Pro and gives really a lot of color around the negotiations. He said, yeah, I think the guy had liquidity. Look, this is exactly what I said in an earlier hot take. Donald Trump had to go to like a, uh, a basically a family office, like a bonding company run by a guy, as opposed to a, a normal bonding company or a surety company owned by a large mega insurance company that's also publicly traded and has a lot of stakeholders. No, you go to a guy, Don Henke, he happens to own a, a bonding company. Steve Martin used to have a, 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 a comedic routine back when he first started as a comedian about Fred's bank. I'm Fred. This is my bank. <laughs> Here, here's your money. It's in my left pocket. That's your bank. It's sort of like that. This is Don's. Uh, this is Don Hankey's bonding company, and he said, "No, no, I saw. I said, oh, this guy's got money. He's he's liquid. I want to give him that loan." And he was engaged in the conversations. Well, if the Trump lawyers knew that they were engaged in conversations, of course, same lawyers with Don Hankey about bailing him out of the four hundred sixty-five million dollar hole. Why didn't they tell the appellate division? In fact, they told the appellate division the exact opposite. We looked everywhere, high and low. We can't find a bonding company. Never disclosed Don Hankey and his Knight Specialty Insurance Company that would maybe come to the rescue as a, wait for the pun, a white knight. Never got told. In fact, I'll go one further as a New York bar member. They have an obligation as officers of the court, not to mislead the court and have and to have candor to the tribunal, which is exactly what it sounds like. You can't lie to the court you're talking to. And at the very least, if there were changed circumstances in that timeline, in that kind of life cycle of the discussions with Don Henke, then Donald Trump's lawyers, it was incumbent upon them to disabuse the appellate division of the misconceptions that they that they had about Donald Trump's difficulties in locating a bond when they were having better chances of locating that bond. They needed to tell the um, appellate division first department in a filing that they, in an amended filing that, hey, just to let you know, we said we couldn't find, but you know we're in discussions with Knight uh, Specialty Insurance Company owned by Don Hankey. We'll get back to you. Never did that. That is what we call, there's a word for it, starts with an L. It's called a lie in telling the court. We wouldn't know anything about this, except, as I said at the top of the hot take, Don Hankey, the owner of Knight, who was a major donor to Donald Trump, who already bailed him out through Axos Bank in California, where he's also a major stakeholder, uh, and, and refinanced another half a billion dollars worth of Donald Trump's property, uh, is a big Trump fan, obviously, and is willing to put his own personal money into Donald Trump. He likes to talk. He talked to NBC, he talked to CNN, and now he talked to ProPublica. And in ProPublica... Um, remember, just to, to set the stage here for the split screen, lawyers are telling the appellate division that it is a, quote, practical impossibility for Donald Trump to get a bond for the full amount. Later, the appellate division lowered the amount of the undertaking requirement from 465, or sorry, yeah, 465 million to 175 million. They also claimed in their filing to the appellate division that all 30 firms that were approached by Donald Trump and his internal people rejected the bond, making it an impossibility to uh, comply with the bond requirement. But the billionaire lender, Don Henke, um, said that he reached out to Trump's camp before the bond was lowered. 
Do you see the timing here? He says that he reached out before the appellate division made its decision and expressed a willingness to offer the full amount of $465 million and to use real estate as collateral. See, that was the problem for Donald Trump. No legitimate, well-funded, solvent, publicly traded insurance company or surety company likes to take real estate because if they get stuck and the judgment doesn't get paid and the bond needs to be used instead because of a defaulting judgment uh, debtor like Donald Trump, they got to liquidate real estate. It takes too long. They're not in the real estate business. But Don Henke is in the real estate business. He owns real estate. He owns car dealerships. He makes subprime car loans to people with no or low credit. No, it's not a commercial. It's my description of Don Henke. So he's used to taking uh, atypical collateral to back the bond. And so he reached out before the appellate division had decided, meaning as far as this hot take is concerned, my posit, my thought experiment is that the lawyers to be truthful to the and with candor to the tribunal of the appellate division first department needed to update them with a filing that they were in discussions with Don Hankey about a full bond while they were sitting and, discover, and, and considering the issue rather than misleading the court by not telling them. Don Henke goes on in his interview with ProPublica to say, quote, I saw that they, Trump, were rejected by everyone, and I said, gee, that doesn't seem like a difficult bond to post, okay, and that there were negotiations, he testified, or, or gave his interview, sorry, he'll testify one day, uh, and maybe in Judge Angoron's uh, courtroom, I'll talk about that at the end of the hot take, that there, he, <clears throat> he said that during the discussions and negotiations between himself and Trump's people, the appellate court... Um, ruled in Trump's favor and lowered the bond to 175. Uh, and that, and this is involving Alina Haba. And he said that um, uh, the uh, Trump people said, sorry, Don, we'll, we'll catch you next time. The bond is just 175. We'll, we'll cover it with cash. Well, they didn't. They went back to Don Hankey a couple of days later and took out the $175 billion bond, which is now the subject of a made, by the way, just to be clear, I don't want to leave the misimpression. That bond, we're not done with the bond. The attorney general has filed a piece of paper under New York procedural law to have the bonding company prove the bond. They've called the bond. They said, really? We think you're bluffing. We don't think you have enough assets or solvency, and we call the bond. And we want a hearing, an evidentiary hearing, with Judge Angoron, which has been granted for a couple of weeks from now in April, for the bonding company to come into court, prove up its financials, prove up its wherewithal to support that bond for $175 million. Now, I don't know if Don Hankey's going to show up. He likes to talk to the media. But a lot of these same guys, like Donald Trump, don't like to testify under oath in a courtroom. So I have a feeling he's going to send, oh, I don't know, Amit Shah, who's the president of the company, the attorney, in fact, who will go – I feel sorry for this guy already, you know, slightly – that he'll be he'll thrown to the wolves, thrown to the lions, and he'll go in and have to testify on behalf of um, the bonding company who's going to have to go and stand and deliver in front of this judge under oath. Uh, Judge Angoron, as they, he decides whether the bond has been properly posted enough and whether the bonding company is sufficiently solvent enough. Um, so Don Hankey uh, basically says um, that when he heard that Donald Trump was having difficulty with the bond, he reached out. And remember the timing here, several days before the bond was reduced. Uh, he further told ProPublica in the interview uh, that he supports Trump politically, that, that he wanted to make the deal no matter what the politics, although he had an interesting phrase for that. He said, well, I think Trump's got the liquidity, and he was confused why others rejected him, and uh, speculating that they might have done so to avoid political backlash. He says, if you're a public company, maybe you don't want to offend 45% of the population. He thinks only 45% of the population is against Donald Trump. I guess he fell asleep during the last election. Um Hankey said in the interview that he informed Trump's camp that he was willing to work with them before the, the, the court ruled to lower the bond and that they said they had the collateral and that they went over the assets that needed to be pledged. So they were actually got down to brass tacks, what assets Donald Trump was going to pledge in order to support the bond. That's how far along it was. And yet the lawyers felt, no, even though we're officers of the court with a duty of candor, we're not going to tell the appellate court that we're close to getting a bond. In other words, Don, Don Hankey was going to do this bond for $465 million. It, it was just, it, you know, all was over but the shouting. They were just going to do, like, line up the assets in a schedule, and Don Hankey was willing to take it, as far as I could see. Um, 
And it was up to Trump at the end to see if he wanted to do the deal. Um, and then at the end, uh, the deal for the larger amount was dropped during a Zoom call between the two sides because uh, the Trump camp got a call that the bond had been reduced. They thought they could do it without Don Henke. Then they came back to Don Henke and he posted the bond. But the focus of this hot take is, did the lawyers for Donald Trump mislead the appellate division first department? And will somebody, namely the uh, New York Attorney General and or, and or Judge Angoron, get to the bottom of it in the hearing in a couple of weeks about proving up the bond? I mean, if Judge Angoron doesn't raise the issue of – uh, you took a representation with the appellate division that you couldn't find a bond anywhere, but you were in discussions with with Hanky, who was willing to give you the bond. Uh, and you were just talking about the pledging of certain assets. Why didn't you inform the appellate division? I mean, Do uh, Judge Angoran can make a bar referral, a grievance referral based on unethical conduct, and I would I would like judges to start doing that when they see unethical, bad faith conduct by lawyers in front of them, especially those representing Donald Trump. They alone are the gatekeepers, and they should do that. We'll continue to follow all of the conduct and professional conduct or what's passing for professional conduct by the Trump side of the ledger right here on the Midas Touch Network and on Legal AF. It's a show, a podcast. We curate the best or top five stories we think you know. We get behind the headlines and at, we sit at the intersection of law and politics as only practicing lawyers can do. Um, uh, who uh, practice in the very courts that we're talking about. Of course, we do it right here, Midas Touch Network, Legal AF. If you want to know what it means, the title, come join us on Wednesdays and Saturdays and you'll find out. And then we're on audio podcast platforms besides YouTube, uh, uh, wherever you get audio podcast platforms from. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch. Keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.